Welcome, everyone, to an off-season NABC chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Steve Prohm, the new head coach at Murray State. This is Steve Prohm 2.0 at Murray. Um, Steve, uh, I thought you had a lot of success, save the last season at Iowa State. Facts, obviously. But you didn't forget how to coach. Yeah. And it's great to see that Murray State came back to you. Um, from your perspective, because it looks like you can go back, you can go yeah. home again. What was the driving force into getting back into coaching after the mini hiatus and especially at a place where you had had so much success? Well, I had a great year out. Uh, I think I got an opportunity to spend a lot of time with my family. My kids are young. I coach first grade basketball with my son. I spent a ton of time with my other children as well. Um, I got a chance to go around and, and watch a ton of different practices and, and see different you know, ways of coaching and different styles and, and, and kind of build some new relationships. So that was great. But obviously, you know, I'm a coach. I love to teach. I love to be around these guys. And, you know, I wasn't sure where I was going to land. And obviously, Murray State, I've got a lot of ties here, special relationships, great memories. My wife's from here. I've had two children born here. Uh, but I think they're moved to the Missouri Valley. I think that's what really made it appealing to where I am coming back home for me and my family. But I'm coming in a new job uh, with the same expectations of winning championships uh, and being on the national stage. And that's why I'm here. And um, we're excited about this transition in the Valley. You know, I think you're a great example. Uh, you know, I could say Thad Mata and Sean Miller to some degree, obviously at Xavier, Thad at Butler, where how you leave a place is yeah. critical. No um, I can say from my own experience, just yeah. w when you leave somewhere, because you never know. A, if you're going to go back, or B, where those people are going to end up that maybe were above you as a superior, and then maybe where do they land? What, what lesson can you draw from you coming back to the same school after the way in which, in a positive way, you left a few years before? Well, I, my dad, he, you know, he raised, he's been in the work field for years, and it's, you know, you never burn a bridge and you're going to see the same people on the way up as you do on the way down. So you got to treat people the right way and be respectful and appreciative. And I think the one thing, our connection to Murray's unique, uh, meet my wife here, her being from here, you know, we've had so many relationships and so many special times and people here, uh, but it is key. And I think it's a lesson to teach to your guys, you know, about how you leave a program or how you leave different places because you don't know. I just hired Dante Poole. He was on my first team here. Uh, my first year in 2012 as a GA. Um, and so you want those relationships. You want to be able to impact the community. Um, and it's great to be here. I mean, I, I feel at a great, great piece here. Uh, we've got a special, special program. And Matt obviously had an unbelievable seven-year run that I'm excited to, 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 to jump in and, and kind of follow behind him. It's crazy when you say seven years. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, but you're right. Not just the conference has changed but also the sport with NIL, with the transfer portal. But because of the tradition and history of Murray and the support in that community, I do think it is in a bit of a unique situation. I would put Belmont, the rival in that same grouping, passionate fan base, alums. It's the number one team in town. How much will that help the survival of the Murrays of the world in this new era? Yeah, I think it's critical. And I think the people in this community, they understand what basketball has meant to this community. And they want to be on the right side as this game, you know, you know, as we go through this transformation with our game, with NIL and transfer portal. You know, the bad thing about the transfer portal is you can lose guys. The good thing is, is we were able to sign 12, you know, so there's a good side of it too when you lose guys. But, you know, we're in discussions. We've got people in the community working with the NIL. Uh, so we can get up to speed and be able to compete. You know, uh, we're going into a great new league and we need to figure out how to be year in, year out, uh, a multi-bid league. And, you know, for us to all to continue to grow our program, the NIL is a big piece and, and we've got to all adapt to it. But we've got great support here, you know, and so we know we're going to have the backing. And that's what's exciting about being at a place like Murray. For those coaches that end up in your situation uh, that are out for a year or two, you know, you did a great job of, of, of staying connected, whether it was literally in person going places or doing some media like this with Field of 68 and other things. Um, you know, how critical is that if you want to get back in to stay relevant? 
Yeah, I think you, you know, someone told me uh, two things. They said, hey, treat this like halftime. You've had great success. And that's the one thing when you do lose a job or you do part ways, look from where you started to where you ended. And there was a lot of good stuff in between. But now that you've kind of rejuvenated, kind of got your juice back, uh, it's the second half. And now how can we just be significant and impactful? But I do think you have to stay relevant. The field of 68 was great for me. It kept me, it kept me studying the game. Me going around really from the end of August to December, I really just traveled about three days a week. I think that was key to be able to, you know, foster relationships, whether it was going to see Rick Barnes at Tennessee, Brad Underwood at Illinois, Chris Beard at Texas. You know, I was all over the place. And from I went to Furman to Chattanooga, I went to good mid-majors. I went to high majors. I went to low majors. Uh, I was a little bit of everywhere just to get a good feel. I think that's that's critical uh, because you do have to stay relevant and you do have to stay involved, uh, you know, so people know that you're there. What'd you pick up? You know, it's about people at the end of the day, the relationships with those kids. You know, it's fun. I mean, everybody, guys, national championship coaches, they may they may write their practice plan on a steno pad. You know, it's it's not about that. And it's not about a drill. It's about, especially in today's society, in today's day and age, how can we impact the people that we're around? How can we build that relationships that we know we're in it together? I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, but I do think sitting out, I talked to one coach who had parted ways and he asked me, should I get right back in? I said, and I asked him his family situation, his financial situation. If you could do it and spend that time with your family in a, in a critical time in their lives, man, you're gonna regret going back way more than you regret sitting out and being with the family uh, and spending that time. And so it was great for me. I feel really good going into this job and excited about where we can go. All right, last thing, Steve, Murray fans want to know, great success, obviously, in the tournament last year. Yeah. Uh, a lot of transfers, as we said. What is this team going to look like? Man, we just got to have an identity right away. And that's what I told our team uh, already. Number one, compete the right way, and number two, be unselfish. And if we do, do those two things, then we're going to put ourselves in a good position as we move into January, February, and March. Congrats, Steve, on being back. Love that you're back in the game. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.